Hello, Hawks. It's Mrs. Farland again, here to read you Chapter 3 of Judy Moody today. Before I start, I wanted to share with you that I now have a Blooms page that I just started. If you are looking to get in contact with me, one way to find me is through Blooms using the following code. 5ZRW2F, and that is one way for you to get in touch with me, is through Blooms. 5ZRW2F, and as always, you can use my email, jfarland at newbeffordschools.org. So I hope that helps you if you're looking for ways to get in touch with me, because I would love to hear from you. Okay. So chapter three, Judy Moody. When we left off, Judy had made some choices. She was going to do the best she could to stay off Antarctica and be in a good mood all the time. She liked the way she felt. And um, today we're going to find out more about what did she do to get there? How did she approach being in a good mood all the time? Because anybody who knows, knows that it's not easy to be in a good mood all the time. Um, especially when there are major things going on, kind of like we're dealing with right now. But I hope that you are all happy, you are all safe, and you are all working very hard to stay the smart cookies that I know that you all are. Okay, so chapter three, Judy Moody, is called The Jessica Experiment. If she, Judy Moody, was going to be in a good mood for one whole entire week, she was going to need info, as in hints, tips, ideas. On the bus ride home, Judy asked her friends, Hey guys, what puts you in a good mood? When I do a really good magic trick, like the fake finger trick, said Rocky, he pulled his index finger, pretending to yank it off. If everybody claps and is amazed, it puts me in a good mood. Uh-huh, Judy scribbled a note to herself. I get in a good mood when I'm done with my homework, said Frank. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Judy looked at her notes. Next, it was Amy's turn. Writing stories puts me in a good mood. I dream stuff up and make it into a book and illustrate it. Trudy scribbled some more. She looked at her notes. Magic trick, homework, write a story. I could do this, said Judy. Do what, asked Amy. Do what, asked Rocky and Frank. Um, nothing, never mind. Judy ran home and took out her list. Magic trick, she tried a magic card trick on Stink. But all she did was spill the deck of cards everywhere. Homework. Judy did not see how homework would put her in a good mood. She crossed it off the list. Write a story. Judy tried to write a story. Okay, here's a little picture of Judy on the bus. Once upon a time, nope, she crossed that out. It was a dark and stormy night. Pete and Repeat were sitting on the top bunk. Pete fell off, who was left? Repeat, Pete and Repeat were sitting on the top bunk. This story could go on and on and on. What a lemon head. Writing a story was so not putting her in a good mood. Who else could she get ideas from? Mom? Dad? Stink? It had to be somebody smart and somebody who never got sent to Antarctica. Wait just a ding dong minute. What could be more perfect than to talk to Little Miss Perfect? Somebody who brushed her hair every day and followed all the rules and got good grades and had never even been near Antarctica. Somebody who had a happy magic eight ball. Jessica A plus Finch. Of course. 
Judy could learn the facts about doing everything right all the time. Being perfect was sure to put her in a good mood. All she had to do was study her subject, like a science experiment. She grabbed her notebook and hopped on her bike and pedaled down the street and around the corner to Jessica Finch's house. And here you could see her story. Not a very good story. You could tell that she had some trouble with her creativity, which my hawks never do. Creative bunch you. <laughs> Ding dong, Judy rang the bell. Jessica, a not ard wolf, open the door. Judy Moody, what are you doing here? She could not tell Jessica, tell all Finch her secret. Then the whole world would know. I, um, thought we could hang out, said Judy. But you never want to hang out with me. Never say never, said Judy, pushing past Jessica. Can I come in? You are in, said Jessica. Well, um, how about if I come up to your room? Sure, said Jessica. I was just going to start measuring things for Measure Up, our new math unit. But that doesn't start till Thursday, said Judy. I like to get a head start, said Jessica. Judy perched on the edge of the bed next to Jessica. She bounced up and down, testing out the jump factor. My mom doesn't like me to bounce on the bed, said Jessica. Check, said Judy. She scribbled. Do not bounce on bed in her notebook. Judy stared sideways at Jessica. Her hair was brushed back into a very neat ponytail, and she was wearing pink. Judy wrote, put hair in ponytails and wear pink in her notebook. Why are you staring at me? asked Jessica. It's rude. No reason, said Judy. She looked around. The bed was made and there were a hundred million fluffy pink pillows on it. Stuffed animal pigs were lined up in a row on the dresser. So was a piggy bank collection. No books or clothes were on the floor. No arts and crafts supplies were on the floor. No gum wrappers were on the floor. A pink robot poster on the wall said, Obey. It was creepy, but Judy didn't say so. Your floor is very neat, said Judy. I could see the rug. Thanks, said Jessica. I like my room clean. It puts me in a good mood. Check. Judy wrote clean room in her notebook. Why are you writing stuff down, asked Jessica. No reason, said Judy, sniffing the air. I smell cupcakes. Do you smell cupcakes? Jessica cackled. That's my lip gloss. She flipped open a teeny tiny pink plastic cupcake. Inside was gooey lip stuff. Judy tried some. Yum, yum. Maybe cupcake lip gloss was another key to a good mood. Judy wrote down, wear cupcake lip gloss. You like smiley faces, huh? In Jessica's room, Judy saw a smiley face pillow, pencil holder, and paper clips. She saw smiley face sunglasses and slippers. Even a smiley face mobile hung over Jessica's desk. She picked up Jessica's smiley magic eight ball. Can I try it? Jessica nodded. Judy had a burning question, but it was a secret. So she asked herself the question silently. Will I be able to stay in a good mood for one whole week? She shook the magic eight ball. Nice outfit. She asked the question again and shook it. Your breath is so minty. She tried again. You smell great. Why does it keep telling me that I smell great, said Judy. Eh, it's the lip gloss, Jessica nodded knowingly. Want to do homework now? 
Judy wrote, do homework on time in her notebook. Here's a little glimpse of Jessica's room. See how neat it is, nothing on the floor, all her smiley faces, her little pig blanket. She also got out her positively pink see-through ruler. She got out her positively pink tape measure. She even had a positively pink yardstick. Wow, you have a yardstick? I have a yardstick of bubble gum. It's this long. She stretched out her arms. Well, it used to be. There's actually two and three quarters inches of gum left. But the box is a yard long ruler, for real. And it has jokes and... Eh, I wouldn't use that for homework if I were you, said Jessica. Judy looked around for something to measure. Do you have a cat? We can measure stuff like the cat's tail, said Judy. Jessica crinkled her forehead. I was just gonna measure the carpet. She started to stretch the tape measure across the rug. Boring. This being in a good mood stuff was harder than it looked. Judy's fingers itched. If only she were back in her closet with her finger knitting. She stared at Jessica some more. Do you ever miss the bus to school, Judy asked. Jessica wrinkled her forehead again. Why would I do that? I mean, are you ever late to school? Say you slept late or read your book under your covers when you should have been getting ready or didn't do your spelling homework and, decide, and decided to stay home sick. Always do my spelling homework. I never fake sick, and I have a walkie clocky, said Jessica. She pulled an alarm clock with wheels from her nightstand. It beeps like a robot and jumps off my nightstand when it's time to get up. I have to get out of bed to chase it around. Can I try, asked Judy. Sure, Jessica set the clock to go off in one minute. They waited, they waited, and they waited some more. Beep, beep. Walkie clocky leaped to the floor. Out of bed, sleepy head. It zoomed across the carpet. Up and at him, madam. It zoomed under the bed. Rise and shine, friend of mine. Judy chased it all around Jessica's room. Wow, said Judy. It walks, it talks, it rhymes, it chimes. She wrote down, get walkie clocky so I'm never late in her notebook. That was fun. Let's do it again. But this time, it's not really a game, said Jessica. She put the clock back on her nightstand. Come on, let's do our homework. Judy looked at her to-do list. She had a lot to do if she was going to stay out of Antarctica. She had a lot to learn about being in a good mood. I can't, said Judy. I have to um, uh, go finish my science experiment. Science experiment? Jessica sat up straight. Her eyes got wide. What science experiment? We don't have any, but Judy was already down the steps and halfway out the front door. Yippee skippy. And that's the end of chapter three. So I do have a few questions for you, but first I really wanna talk about that walkie clocky because I could really use one in the morning. Having something to chase around the bedroom would really help get me up and I would never be late again. I bet there's a lot of you who would like one too. If you do, let me know. So our question for today is, here we go. Chapter three, question challenge. What are three things that Judy learned from Jessica that she thinks will help her be in a good mood? Question one. And question two, do you think 
Doing these things will make Judy happy. Why or why not? All right, so I want you to answer these questions and you can email me the response to jfarland at newbeffordschools.org or you could even use Bloom's, here we go, 5ZRW2F to get hold of me. Either way, you can write a response and I'm actually thinking about starting a contest. Anybody who responds will be um, entered into a raffle and um, I will raffle off some gift cards for people who respond. So I hope that you're watching and listening and I hope to get a response from some of you soon. In the meantime, be responsible, be respectful, work hard, okay? All right, Hawks, I will be seeing you soon. Have a great Tuesday and wash those hands. Bye, guys.